conversa de imprensa com Eugénie Bouchard, assim, na televisão antes de All Airs Ladies Open. Eugénie, welcome back to Portugal. It's been a while for you. Thank you, yeah, I'm so happy to be back. How does it feel to, to be back and what can you tell us about your expectations maybe for this week? Um, yeah, it feels great. I haven't played uh, in the summer in Europe in a few years because of there was COVID and then my injury. So um, I forgot how nice Europe was in the summer and uh, it's really nice to be back. And you're a backhand player, for, for, or a right player for the first, the first time since a while and you played pretty well I believe, the last time you played with play with reaching the final and, and playing the good Roman Garros. Are, mm -hmm. are you feeling being back on, on this surface? Well, you know, it's interesting. It's different, um, the clay over here, even compared to the red clay. I was just in Colombia, and it's kind of different. So um, it's good because I've played my whole life. We've come to Europe so much, like even in juniors and stuff. So I feel like I'm pretty used to it because of that. And, um, you know, it's definitely different. It's more physical, um, but I feel like I've always done well on it. So I like it. Well, I see, I didn't remember it was the same club. I thought this was a different club because, well, so this is what we were talking, I was talking to the tournament director and he said I played here before and I was like, no, I've never seen this place before. And he said that there used to be a stadium. Yeah, over there. Wait, wait, wait. I think you played Kuznetsov in the, in the yes. stadium that was yes. constructed just for the event. I see, okay, so that's why I'm like kind of confused. Um, so I didn't realize it was the exact same place, so that's cool. Uh, I mean, it was nine years ago, so I don't remember too much, but I remember um, the food being really good, and since I've been back, the food has <laughs> is still very good. So. You, you've had a few days here in Portugal already. Yeah. Yep. Are you okay with the jet lag now and ready to go? I think so, yeah. I think I've been sleeping pretty good, and uh, it was luckily able to adjust right away. It's important to try get on the new time zone as soon as possible. Um, so I think we've we've done that pretty well. Looking back to, to nine years ago when, when, when you played here, it was the best year of your career. Obviously, you, you, you had some tough times, some injuries, but how are you feeling where your tennis is right now? Because when you, when you played, you had a couple of months at the end of last year where you actually played and you played well and you had good results. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been tough, of course. There's no um, secret about that. I um, you know just want to get like kind of a rhythm back. I feel like I play my best when I play a lot of tournaments and with the stopping and starting because of injuries, it makes it really hard to kind of get that feeling of like playing every week. Um, so I think that's just the number one goal right now is to just try to get into a rhythm. Like right now, this is my first week in Europe and I have potentially six weeks in a row. Um, so I want to hopefully play as many of those as I can because that helps me feel better. Yeah, I mean, look, I haven't played a lot of tournaments back to back in a while, so we'll see how that goes. Um, that's the plan, that's the goal, so hopefully we can do that. And of course, being healthy, I guess it's your main goal right now, but can you tell us a little bit what are your goals to the, the next, to the, this season? Can you yeah, tell us? I mean, I want to get back to you know the highest ranking I can as soon as possible. Obviously, I want to, you know, I have a protected ranking that I use sometimes, so I want to like have a better ranking than that normally, you know, get in the top 100, get back to playing main draw slams, um, and, you know, where I feel like I belong. So are you planning to use that protected ranking for the bigger tournaments on stage? Yeah, exactly. I'm in, you know, qualities of Madrid next week, um, and, you know, I can try for Rome and tr just try for some tournaments um, that, you know, I feel like I can play at that level, and that's, that's what's great about it. You can use it to kind of get back into those and hopefully make your real ranking catch up. <laughs> Of course. I mean, I feel like I wouldn't put in all this time and effort if I didn't still believe that. Um, it's a lot to come back from injuries. takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, a lot of energy, and life is short, you know? So I'm doing it because I think I still can. If I didn't, I would, uh, you know, be having babies or <laughs> something else. <laughs> Do you go back in time to use your memories from your best season on tour to, as a motivation to get back there? Or Sometimes, yeah. I think it's important to... Um, you know, 
remember who you are in a sense, relive some moments, um, get confidence from knowing great results that you have done, things like that. I think that's a good thing to do. Just a quick one on your, on your coaching situation. I think mm-hmm. that you're, that you're a new coach, mm-hmm. coach at Rugby, the Women's Sisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I recently started working with Eric. Um, he's based in Miami, and so for me, it made a lot more sense to find a coach in Miami. I'm not really spending time in Vegas anymore, and my old coach, Tim, was based in Vegas, so that was the main reason for it. And uh, But luckily, I mean, I think Eric's great. He has that experience of being with, like, you know, top, top players, even if they weren't still in their prime anymore. Um, you know, they're champions no matter what, and so it's interesting to learn from his experience with that. And um, he gives me a lot of great information, you know, technical, tactical on the court, and um, I've been really enjoying it so far. So you are not anymore with Renee, the Renee stuff, you are not with her? No, I haven't really worked with her in a while. It was more like kind of here and there with her, a little bit out of COVID, things like that. Um, she's too busy commentating for me now, so. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, she's a good friend, but I have not worked with her in a little bit, no. Yeah, it's funny. My coach and I were looking at the list this morning, and it was like so many players in the top 100. And I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? I think there's a little bit of a lack of tournaments in general, and that makes some of these tournaments like stronger than they probably used to be, which is great for this tournament in and of itself. But um, in general, I think a lot of players just want to play more. So um, it's really tough competition, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like a 250 at least. This is our biggest pivotal tournament since you played here the mm-hmm. last time. Was that the last year they had it when yeah, I played? Yeah. Then That's from, so. From 2015, they, they start in a new location from the ATP. So the WTA. Estoril, was, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the last edition uh, that Kuznetsova played. Then she played the final against Pavlyuchenko. Yeah. Okay. So they haven't had that event here since then? No. Oh, that sucks. The women's event since then. We had this one as a 60K. Okay. 80 last year and now 100. So this is the first year it's 100? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Like We're getting back. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. I'd like to ask you about tennis in, in Canada. First of all, how do you see it at the moment? And then, uh, since you exploded on tour, there has been uh, Bianca, Leila, Felix, Dennis, and so on. Mm-hmm. Of course, they discussed last year. So, does it help with the pressure to have more uh, players coming up and having good results uh, instead of being just you and the focus just on you? Uh, it's interesting. I think there's two sides to that. Um, Yeah, I think in hindsight, if back in the day there was a bit more of Canadians around my level and age, maybe we would have pushed each other more because I think you see that a lot in countries where there's a couple of good ones and they actually push each other to be better. Um, And I was kind of breaking through on my own. But now I think it's great for the level of tennis. I think the quality, they can all help each other a lot. And even younger than the ones you're talking about, you know, I don't even know them, but whatever, the juniors that are coming up, I'm sure we just probably have a bigger pool to choose from and I think that just gives you a higher chance of having a champion. Um, So I'm I'm super happy, yeah, I mean, look, tennis um, is a great sport and I want it to be big in the country where I'm from and to have been a part of that is is obviously an honor and um, I hope it continues. And did you watch yesterday the (laughs) Billie Jean King Cup ties? No, the time zone is a bit too hard, but I've been texting some of the girls. I was actually talking with Bianca and she flew over there just to like support. I was like, wow, you're so like (laughs) sweet. I mean, she was in Miami and she went all the way to Vancouver. So, um, it was nice to see all the, all the girls like supporting each other like that. And, you know, I haven't played one of those in a while and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I wanted to try play, but it it was, um, it was a tough one. I obviously wouldn't have played a match as well. So that factors into my decision, but, um, it was also like all the way in Vancouver, hard court, things like that. So, um, I hope to play the next tie though. Yeah, they did all the hard work, and then I'll just show <laughs> up and hold the trophy, you know. <laughs> I'd just like to, to ask you, when you had that time off with a shoulder injury, mm-hmm. do you ever think maybe retiring or something? Did you ever cross your mind to, to retire from, from tennis? Yes, I mean, I would be lying if it didn't cross my mind. Um, because it was such a long progression to get back, you're kind of like takes a year, a year and a half to get back, and then I'll only play two more years after. Is it worth it, you know? Um, But, you know, I decided it was worth it. I felt like I would regret if I kind of 
let an injury stop me instead of just deciding when I wanted to stop. And I missed it when I was out. I missed the competition and I missed uh, playing. So that kept me motivated. Maybe it's an unfair question, but what would be your ultimate goal in tennis? What would you like to achieve? I mean, the goal is always to win a Grand Slam. I mean, that's always been my goal since I was a kid. Um, I got close one time. And, uh, you know, that's always the dream. If you don't have that dream, then why are you still playing, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I think, I mean, I think most people say that, no? <laughs> and we were kind of colleagues because you made TV commentators <laughs> yeah. when you were out. All that the experience for you. And what did you learn to see uh, your colleagues in a different perspective? Uh, it was super interesting. I learned a lot of the behind the scenes, how it works in TV and commentary. I've you know, I feel comfortable in front of a camera because I've just done interviews since I'm like 15 years old. So it felt pretty natural. And um, people told me I was like decent. So maybe it's a post-career thing. But the best thing it gave me, honestly, was just like structure. And, and, you know, obviously I had my rehab every day, but it gave me like a job to do. And I felt like my mind would go crazy if I didn't have like a schedule and, and something to, to aim for. And, and the best part about it as well was just the fact that it gave me like adrenaline that I didn't get because um, of not being like playing matches so you know going live on TV is, is stressful and I, I I'm used to that I need that in my life and I've done I've had that for 20 years of my life so it kind of replaced what I missed with tennis and uh, so it was really helpful in that way and how do you see the top, the top of the, the women's game at the moment because it's, it's, it's looking very interesting yeah it's definitely interesting I think um You see a lot of the big hitters that are winning all the tournaments right now. I mean, we have Rybakina and um, Sabalenka that are just like in the finals of almost every tournament. So um, it's interesting to see that that game style is kind of still the one that's dominating um, at the ultimate end. And that, I mean, for me, I like that because I have an aggressive game style and that's more how I want to play. And um, so it's motivating to see that. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's open. There's depth, but it's open. You know, there's a bit of both kind of. Anything can happen, but there are still some, some really, really solid players. So um, it's interesting. And of course, Petra just won Miami. And you of course. Share, you share with her the, your biggest career uh, yeah. in the final so far. So it kind of, I guess, drives you to, to be on, on the shoes. For sure. And another big hitter, of course, Petra. And people are saying, oh my God, she's, well, I don't know, 33. She's so old to win Miami Open. And I was like, okay, that's. They're not saying that about the guys, you know, the guys are older than that, uh, the ones who are dominating. So, so there's still chances for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.